Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 26 of What If Naruto Was the Red X. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 27 of it, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start, please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Ravager sighed while rubbing her temples through her mask for a moment. All things considered, today had been one massive disaster after another. Her being beaten, well anticipated, had been more thoroughly than she had liked. Never expected him to figure out how to get around my future sense. She admitted to herself before opening a drawer and pulling out a packet of cigarettes, tapping it a couple times she then pulled one out, before lighting it with a match and breathing in the smoke, before exhaling a breath of smoke. Ah, I don't care what father says, I really needed that. Ravager mused as she felt several muscles loosen while leaning back in her chair. On the screen before her, like on many occasions, were scenes of Naruto in battle. However this time they were showcasing hers and the Kanohanin's failure in capturing the blonde. Admittedly, not one of my better ideas. I had at least thought blindsiding him so soon after taking down Harley and Ivy would have worked to my advantage. Ravager mused to herself before hearing a ruckus from nearby and placed a hand over her face. Somebody please shoot me. She thought to herself while Sasuke suddenly threw open the door to the infirmary, breathing heavily while using the wall to brace himself from falling. While he knew the youth was fully capable of killing her if given the chance, especially with his speed, death truly didn't frighten Ravager in the least. Damn it Ravager. I finally had him. Why the hell did you extract us? Sasuke demanded while ignoring the fact he'd also been soundly beaten. It was only thanks to Ino and Hinata's healing jutsus and Wintergreen's admittedly advanced medicinal skills, he was even standing after all, let alone moving after that beating he took. Ravager scowled, if it weren't for the fact that, in her eyes, Naruto was worth putting up with this sharring and wielding idiot, she'd have already killed Sasuke herself. He wasn't smart, not from what she'd seen of him now, or heard he'd done in the past. He wasn't especially cunning, he only seemed to have rare bursts of intelligence actually. He wasn't all that strong, she could gut him in his sleep, if she had half a mind too after all. And he most certainly wasn't as handsome as that pink-haired moron of a medic nin seemed to think. Blowing out some smoke Ravager swiveled around in her chair and stood up. Idly, she saw Kakashi wander out of the infirmary as well, holding his ribs, which Naruto had broken. Marching over to Sasuke, Ravager grabbed the Ichiha by the throat, and lifted him up off his feet with one arm and a scowl across her face. The teen grasped at her wrist with white eyes, while she merely tightened her grip until the only sounds to escape his mouth were labored gasps as he futilely clawed at her arm, so he could try to breath properly again. Because full, ever since he arrived, Uzumaki's turned into a major factor in my agenda. He's no good to me if he's dead. I need him, preferably alive, for my plans to work. Ravager said with a snarl, bringing her face right up to his, and glaring hard into his onyx black eyes. Feeling repulsed by the Ichiha's nearness to her person, she then tossed him to the side with all her strength, and sent him across the room. She found the thud, when Sasuke struck the opposite wall to be immeasurably satisfying. Ouch. Kakashi mumbled and Ravager looked at him, having actually forgotten he was present for a moment. Meanwhile, Sasuke gasped and greedily took an air as he slowly pushed his body up, then turned around to face Ravager, and saw she had went back to watching recordings of Naruto in that Takura mask outfit fighting with the Teen Titans. Inwardly, he wondered what was so fascinating to her. The dope wasn't worth all the attention she seemed to have focused on him after all, but antagonizing her was clearly not in his best interests. So is it that you need him for your plans to get revenge with how hard he can push the ones you hate? Sasuke questioned and Ravager felt her head start to pound because of the Chiha's stupidity. She honestly only cared about fulfilling her father's plans to find the perfect apprentice. Tara and Robin had been flops, the former having actually killed him, but Naruto was scurly like her father, he'd be the perfect one to take over for him in his stead. I can understand that. I suppose that as an Avenger, I can try tolerating him until he has no further use to you. Sasuke said while Ravager tuned back into reality, and made a mental note, not to drift off into her thoughts too greatly from now on. Shut up. Ravager said venomously while resisting the urge to throw something at the whelp. She wasn't stupid, if anger to a point she knew he could kill her, but she found it hard to put up with him. Sasuke himself merely watched her for a moment, while noticing her rub her temples with an obvious headache, then turned and made his way back to the infirmary to rest. Powerful, ruthless, cunning this ravager was truly worthy of being an Ichiha's woman. There was just a problem that she seemed to prefer that dope rather than him to deal with. However, she had made it very clear if she used his Sharingan to try to make her his woman, she castrated him with the rustic kunai. Not to mention she seemed all but immune to genjutsu, having apparently trained in mental arts to shield her from such silly illusions as she called them. You'll try tolerating him until he's useless to me. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing about you, you gomaniacal fool. 
And should you attempt to kill Naruto again, well, ever since I learned you existed and decided to use you Kanoha fools, I've looked forward to showing you that pawn's free expendable, Ichiha. Ravager thought to herself while reaching up to pull her sig from her lips, and exhale a breath of smoke. She then pulled up the recording of when Naruto had just plain chewed up and spat out the Kanoha group, while he'd been dressed in that Akatsuki garb of his the first time. Watching his without Sasuke they were clearly more than just a little outclassed, Ravager could see why the boy was so arrogant. Regardless of his stupidity and obvious insanity, Sasuke was still powerful, but as she watched Naruto beat the Kanoha in without Sasuke, then watched the fight with him as they still lost, it showed just how much stronger the blonde really was. She shook her head in amusement, Naruto was right, these Kanoha shinobi, and she used the word shinobi loosely, were flunkies. Her father's assembly line robot commandos were less expendable than these fools, and she allowed dozens of them be torn apart during this last fiasco. Sighing and shaking her head, Ravager then looked over to where Kakashi was only for the man to say something. You do know smoking can kill you, right? Kakashi asked the white-haired girl and Ravager gave him a look, before taking a puff of smoke and exhaling, basically telling him to go fuck himself, while also flipping the man off. What she did to unwind, was none of his, Sasuke's, or even her father's business as far as she was concerned. Holding up his hands placating, Kakashi then made his way back to the infirmary, and blew out smoke once more. Digging her now nearly burnt away sick into her ashtray, Ravager then rubbed her temples with her index fingers, and frowned in thought. If you fools are of any indication of what everyone else is like in your home, I can see why he'd leave it. Betraying his former home. Ha. Uzumaki probably just got sick of babysitting so many worthless buffoons that boasted of their so-called superiority, thanks to their so-called abilities as warriors. She thought to herself bitterly, making a mental note to go out and get severely hammered tonight while she was unwinding. She hardly knew about Naruto's past other than the scraps she had got hold of it, that he'd shared with his teammates on Tartarus and Draven from all the time she'd been observing him, and even she could tell, that much about Naruto. He wasn't going to be used, but people who didn't even appreciate everything he did for them. So he left that place, it was as plain and simple, cut and dry as that. Sighing to herself she pulled up a screen much smaller than the others, that showed when the Kanoha flunkies were wondering, if they could use her, and smirked slightly to herself. Ha! It was insulting for them to think they weren't being watched at all times since they had gotten here, and yet could get away with trying to reverse roles with her. She was the one using them, not the other way around. It was one of her first lessons from her father, if you offer to side with anyone, keep as close an eye on your allies as you do with your enemies. Or as the old saying goes, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Shaking her head and putting that screen away, Ravager returned to observing her other files. She looked over the recordings of Naruto again, a smirk making its way onto her face. Of all the words to describe Uzumaki, she found complex suited him best. He was neither good nor evil, willing to go against the law and those that upheld it, yet at the same time, he was selfless and noble. He was truly a shade of grey in every sense of the word. Naruto Uzumaki he continued to pique her interests relentlessly shame he already had a girlfriend. Wait just one second. Where the hell did that come from? Blinking, Ravager grimaced while rubbing her temples and shook her head. I really need to get out more. She noted to herself and made that mental note to get hammered into a plan for tonight, so she wouldn't go star craving that. Ravager quickly switched the screens to watch Sully the Titans. It was best not to dwell on what had just gone through her head and get ready for her night on the town. Turning her computers off, Ravager took one last look at them before they shut down, then made her way to her room with a smirk. Izumaki Namikaze Naruto, yes, complex suited him very very well. Titan's Tower. Starfire sighed while sitting in midair, waiting for the other titans to return, while Raven tended to Naruto's wounds. I hope he will be alright. She thought to herself before stretching out her limbs and leaned back in midair, floating around the titans op center absently. I wonder if friend Raven requires my further assistance. Starfire wondered before shaking her head and sighing once more. Unlike Raven and Cyborg, she had no idea how to use any healing abilities or medicines. Rolling over and floating on her stomach, Starfire folded her arms under her head and looked at the door. I wish I had something to keep me busy, but I do not feel like doing any of the cooking, friend Raven is preoccupied with the healing, and I do not know where the others are though, I must wonder what is taking them so long. Starfire said then wondered to herself while looking to a clock nearby. Given the usual length of missions Starfire wouldn't be surprised if the others were out longer, but given that the ninja had been all but incapacitated when they left, she felt that they should have returned by now. Sighing, Starfire closed her eyes, but the sight of the hole in Naruto's chest seemed to flash before her vision. While a warrior by nature, Starfire had never seen someone who could take a hit like that. This Sasuke had literally punched through Naruto and he'd still been able to fight back. It was impressive, but she truly hoped he would be alright, she would have preferred if he hadn't gotten hurt, but she supposed the sight of Raven being in danger, overrode anything else in his mind. I believe you are very lucky friend Raven, to have a consort who is so loyal and caring. Starfire mused with a wry smile, 
happy the normally aloof girl was finding some small semblance of happiness. While unknown to most, Starfire was actually older than Raven, and thus thought of her more as her little sister than anything. She supposed that might be why she was so clingy to Raven. Her own experiences with her sister probably, instinctively, wanted her to be nicer to Raven than was probably necessary, because she saw the girl as somewhat of a sister as well as a friend. A sudden ringing broke Starfire from her pondering, thus causing the alien to sit up and look around. Hello. She questioned and then frowned as the ringing came once more. Snapping her fingers as she remembered they had a doorbell Starfire flew down to the entrance hall of the tower. Coming out of the elevator, Starfire gasped seeing the other titans all unconscious on the floor. Quickly flying over to them, she checked for pulses, and was happy to find they were all alive. Looking around for a moment, Starfire then looked to her friends and decided that they shouldn't be lying around on the floor, thus beginning the arduous task of carrying each of them to their rooms. Nearby, Donnie watched as Starfire took the titans through the tower while giving a mental sigh. It had been a choice between bringing the titans back here, and trying to follow Ravager to her base. Unfortunately she'd gone with making sure the titans were safe, and she had to admit she wanted to make sure Naruto was as well. I swear sensei, you're starting to rub off on me. Donnie thought to herself and wondered, what that said about how similar they are to one another. Shaking that thought out of her head and then seeing that Starfire was preoccupied with taking her friends to their rooms, the young ghost girl flew up and through the ceiling, heading up the tower while checking rooms. Soon finding the infirmary, Donnie saw a tired raven trying to heal Naruto. The girl was opening and closing her eyes at random, while, all things considered, Naruto's wounds were almost completely healed. Frowning at that, Donnie flew over to Raven and stayed invisible. If the older girl hadn't been so wiped from what Donnie could tell, she probably would have been found out. Watching as Raven suddenly slumped forward from exhaustion, Donnie moved and caught her, keeping her from falling on a sleeping Naruto. Shaking her head, Donnie then flew inside of Raven, and overshadowed her, the violet-haired sorceress eyes glowing the same neon green as Donnie's. Standing up, Donnie grimaced as she noticed how stressed out Raven's body was. Does she never just relax herself? She's got enough tension in her neck and shoulders to suggest it. Donnie wondered then muse while twisting around for a moment and taking a breath to relax. One thing Donnie knew was that overshadowing only took control of the body. The mind was more or less put to sleep, thus, Donnie was only in control of Raven's body, while her subconscious and conscious minds were both still asleep. She had to admit this made things easier for her, especially since it basically meant she didn't have to worry about causing Raven's powers to wig out. Rubbing her, or Raven's, shoulders for a moment Donnie then turned invisible and walked over to the door before sticking her head out. Not seeing Starfire outside the young gossling girl made her way through the tower. Checking various rooms to see if they were Raven's, Donnie wondered why it was so annoying to find. Suddenly noticing a door with the word Raven printed on it, Donnie felt her eyes drop and a flat expression fall across her face. Well that isn't obvious at all. She mumbled in Raven's voice, and then blinked, almost thinking Raven had said it since sarcasm was her thing. Making her way through the door, Donnie then pulled off Raven's cloak and folded it before placing it down on her nightstand. Turning and looking around, Donnie stopped at a mirror and blinked. I didn't know Raven had curves like these. Donnie noted while moving her, her Raven's, hips from side to side. Blushing as she realized what she was doing, Donnie turned away from the mirror and crossed her arms. No ogling your sensei's girlfriend, no matter how nice a body she has. Donnie scolded herself, before groaning at the way it came out, making a note to hit herself later. Donnie removed Raven's belt, gloves, and boots before putting them away, and stretched out her, her Raven's, arms. Lying down in Raven's bed she pulled up the covers, and got comfortable, before closing Raven's eyes. Sighing, Donnie got out of Raven, and watched as Raven fell fast asleep, before nodding to herself. Looking back at Raven for a moment, then at her cloak, and took a thoughtful expression, before snapping her fingers. So that's it. The cloak hides her figure. She mumbled to herself, and then made sure she didn't disturb Raven's sleep. Seeing the gray-skinned teen roll over, and dig deeper into the covers, Donnie gave a sigh of relief, before placing the cloak back where she found it. Flying out of the room she then made her way back to Naruto to check on him. Seeing the now only slight wound, where Sasuke had hit him made Donnie breath a sigh of relief. But, don't want you dying on me sensei. Donnie said before floating out of the tower, now assured her sensei was in good hands, she flew back towards Tartarus HQ, to fill in the others to what happened something told her those Kanohenin were going to be dead soon as well. Ravager happily walked into her HQ, dressed in some civilian attire of a black leather jacket, white tank top, blue jeans, and black high top sneakers. Diggling almost drunkenly, the girl walked past a shocked Kakashi as he stared at her. Ravager. He questioned and she turned on one heel, surprisingly graceful, given how intoxicated she was from the smell alone. Yes, who else? She stated in a surprisingly serious tone, and then turned back around and stretched her arms into the air while walking to her room, Sasuke paying particular attention as she passed. Have you been drinking or something? Kakashi asked while covering his nose, the stench of alcohol clear to him, and Ravager turned to give him a look. Yes. 
what of it? She asked before turning back, not waiting for an answer, and walking into her room, closing the door behind her as she did. She's amazingly in control of herself as she's drunk. Sasuke said while walking out of his room, and pulling off his soaked shirt. He'd unfortunately been unable to change clothes after his fight last night. Regardless of how tough he liked to act, he didn't like sleeping in the green soaked clothes. He also wondered what he'd managed to bathe himself in during his latest moment of insanity. Turning to the side he then saw Sakura, and thus tossed his shirt at her face. Hey. Sakura complained, and the Ichiha smirked slightly as she pulled the shirt off of herself, and groaned when she felt the partially dried green stuff get on her. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Ravager suddenly called while poking her head out of her room. Looking to her with a raised brow, Sasuke gaped seeing that she was quite clearly topless, though used the door to conceal herself. Whatever that green shit is could be toxic or worse. So it'd be better that you not throw it on people if they might mutate into monsters, because of it speaking of which I need to run an analysis on it anyways, so don't throw it away either. Ravager then mused before moving back into her room, Sasuke looking to Kakashi with white eyes. I love this universe. Kakashi said with a nod of his head and Sasuke scowled, while mentally telling the man to back off. Turning away, Sasuke took his shirt back from Sakura, while she twitched and then shivered. You okay? Kakashi questioned and Sakura looked at her arms for a moment, before nodding her head. Shrugging, Kakashi reached into his weapons case, and retrieved his news book before happily reading it to himself. Great, now your precious Sasuke got us covered in something toxic. Ayane complained and Sakura pinched the bridge of her nose. When will you just shut up already? He's not evil, he's not insane, he's just, really really stressed is all. Sakura insisted and Ayane growled and wished she could slap her, then gaped as Sakura's left arm suddenly did so. Both were silent for a moment, before looking at their arm, Ayane grinning as she made a fist, the left hand doing as she did. Widening her eyes, Sakura looked around to make sure no one had seen that, before making a break for the bathroom. Entering and looking at her reflection, she wasn't surprised to see that a vision of what Ayane looked like appeared over her reflection. Unlike when they were younger, and she'd only look like her with the kanji for inner Sakura on her brow, her inner self seemed to reflect portions of her, as in Ayane's own, personality. Ayane was rather different to Sakura, having fuchsia hair and dark forest green eyes, possibly reflecting her darker more violent nature, though she was pale, since she never got out that much before, she was also more physically fit, being a reflection of her growing strength of will, and the last thing, that made Sakura hate her with a passion, she seemed to have a larger chest than her, which Ayane said just reflected her being more confident in herself, and her looks than Sakura herself, bitch. What the hell was it just now? Sakura demanded and Ayane shrugged before lifting her left arm, Sakura's left arm following it. I don't know, but I like it. Ayane replied with a grin, and flexed her arm, causing Sakura to do the same. Stop that. Sakura ordered and Ayane stuck her tongue out at her. Damn it. Why would you just go away already, haven't you pestered me enough? Sakura demanded and Ayane crossed her arms, and gave her a look, Sakura's left arm moving to rest in the same fashion, as if she'd crossed her arms. Why? Maybe because I don't want to leave. Ayane told the pincat and Sakura nearly screamed before leaning towards the mirror. Then why can't I make you go away? She demanded and Ayane grinned towards her evilly. You honestly think you can make me do anything? Ayane questioned before snickering and placing her hand onto the mirror, forcing Sakura's arm to do the same. Now that is rich pinky. My will is too strong for you to stick me into some little hole, so you'd better get used to me or get ready to spend the rest of our life in a little hole pinky, cause I'm not going anywhere. Ayane told the pincat before fading from the mirror, an amused snicker following her even as she left. Looking at her hands worriedly, Sakura then exited the bathroom and looked around, figuring that Ino and Hinata were still asleep she wondered what Sasuke was doing, and sighed upon seeing him standing next to Ravager's door. What's she got that I don't? Sakura inwardly demanded and Ayane snickered, before piping in what she felt was the answer. You mean besides money, power, an army at her beck and call, the capability to use swords, a body any supermodel would kill for, and Sasuke's attention. Well, she has a much better rack than you. Ayane offered with a laugh at her expense and Sakura growled indignantly, before crossing her arms and stomping off. Titan's tower. Raven opened her eyes and stretched out her limbs as she sat up in bed. What the hell where am I? She suddenly wondered while rolling out of the bed, and then rolled her arm in a socket. Jeez, I feel like I just went one on one with Rath. She noted and then looked at her reflection in a mirror. Let's see, purple hair and eyes, check, gray skin, check, female, check. She listed while looking at herself, then stopped and noticed her that her hair was a little longer, probably meaning she needed a trim, and that her finger and toenails were longer, looked more like claws, and seemed to be black. Who the hell painted my nails? Has Happy been getting extra frisky again, or what? Raven wondered with a frown, before stopping when she saw a blue cloak laying on the nightstand and her eyes widened. Oh shit, I'm free. She asked then picked up the cloak and grinned as it started to turn green in her hands. Yes. Ha ha ha. 
Freedom baby. It tastes so sweet. She then exclaimed before looking at her clothes and frowned before holding out a hand. Concentrating, Raven formed a ball of black energy before three items fell into her hand and she smirked. Seeing as I'm in charge now, I think a little armor would be much better to being completely defenseless and weak. Also better figure out a way to get this body into shape, I swear, I know controlling rage is important, but she could at least work out a little. She muttered while pulling on a pair of leather fingerless gloves that were attached to segmented leather armor that reached over her forearms, then pulled on similar armor on around her waist before nodding her head. Reaching over she then pulled on her belt and cloak, before pulling on her boots, grinning, as they turned green as they came into contact with her body. Hopping up, the confident girl then made her way out of the room, and out to Ops. Passing by a shock beast boy who gaped upon recognizing the girl, she walked into Ops and turned to the kitchen. Bubbing her head while humming a tune, the girl then looked over to the site, as a very groggy cyborg entered the room. Time for breakfast, hey cyborg, could you make some waffles? Raven asked with a cocky smirk across her lips, and the titanium teen blinked before turning and gaped when he saw the familiar green cloak. Oh shit, this can't be good. Cyborg said remembering this particular version of Raven from a trip into her mind. Hey Cyborg, yo, Earth to Cyborg. Raven called out while looking at the metal man, and he shook his head. Ah, uh, yeah, what did you need again? Cyborg questioned and Raven grinned once more. I'm in the mood for waffles. She replied and Cyborg blinked before grinning and making his way to the kitchen. You got it, Ray. He said while Raven bobbed her head while humming a tune again. So somehow Raven's bravery and confidence is loose, I wonder what that means I should probably scan that green shit for anything. Cyborg thought to himself, but decided that breakfast should come before he did that, while getting the waffle iron out. Meanwhile, Beast Boy just stared from his seat at Raven as she bobbed her head. Nightwing then entered the room, while nursing a pounding head and stopped, when he saw a green cloaked Raven humming. She seems awfully happy. He noted and Raven grinned. Yep. I'm free and all is right with the world. Pua. Raven said while pumping a fist, and Nightwing stared at the girl, before turning to Cyborg. Ah, Cyborg, we need to talk. Knight said while walking over to the metal teen, then turned to look at Raven as she continued humming to herself. Turning back to the metal teen as he worked on making waffles, Knight gave him a look. What the hell is going on with Raven? Knight asked quietly, and Cyborg leaned towards him while keeping his robotic eye on the waffle mix. This is one of her personalities me and Beast Boy told you guys about. That is all her bravery, confidence, and fighting spirit rolled into one being. Cyborg replied, and Knight felt his eyes widen before frowning as he took a moment to look at the girl. He noticed her elongated fingernails first, then the strange leather armor she was wearing, and turned back to Cyborg. I thought they were supposed to be identical to Raven. But this one has armor and long claws. Knight said and Cyborg nodded his head casually, while also pouring the waffle mix into the iron. I know, and that's not normal. I think that green shit from last night did something to her it might have unbalanced her mind enough to give her other emotions temporary control of her body. Or, possibly permanent control. I need to do a scan on some of that stuff to figure out what's going on with her. Cyborg explained and Nightwing nodded while Cyborg flipped the first waffle onto a plate and started his work on the next one. Good morning friends. Is it not a most joyous day? Starfire commented as she entered the room with her arms outstretched, and Brave quickly turned to her with a white grin on her face. Meanwhile Beast Boy continued to stare at the green cloaked raven, still too shocked to say anything about it. Got that right Star. Brave said while throwing an arm up and Starfire stopped, then looked at the green raven with a blink. Friend Raven are you feeling alright? She asked and Brave grinned while giving her a look. Of course I'm alright, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, and I feel like kicking some bad guy but... Brave said, causing Starfire to stare at her with white eyes, while Nightwing turned back to Cyborg with a blank expression. We've got to fix this and fast. Knight stated and Cyborg had to agree with him on that, while he finished with Raven's plate. Here you go Ray, dig in. Cyborg offered while sliding some waffles over to Brave, the green cloaked Raven catching it and digging in with gusto. Flying over to Cyborg and Nightwing, Starfire continued to look at Raven for a moment, before turning back to the two boys. Friends, many things about friend Raven still confound and confuse me, but I believe that this is definitely not normal. Starfire stated and Nightwing looked to Cyborg, both nodding their heads in agreement with the girl's analysis. Man, what a night, and we lost those ninja creeps to boot. Kid Flash mumbled as he walked into Ops with Donna, the Amazon nodding her head. I just hope Raven's boyfriend is alright, he was pretty badly injured after all. Donna noted and Brave suddenly finished her waffles and slammed her plate into the counter with white eyes. Shit. Naruto. You stupid bitch. How do you forget about your man so easily? Brave demanded of herself before blinking as the alarm went off, then quickly made her way over to a computer. Alright, I'll kick one maybe two bad guys asses, then come back to make sure Naruto's fine, three bad guys tops. Raven's confidence said to herself before grinning as the information came up on the computer. Mumbo jumbo. Ha, this will take all of five seconds. Raven said to herself before snapping her fingers and vanishing in a burst of black energy. 
looking to one another. The Titans waited all of a second before rushing out of ops to make their way to the scene, hopefully before Brave went overboard. Jump City. Brave appeared in front of the bank Mumbo was robbing, and pulled her hood up with a grin. Walking into the bank she walked inside, and then watched as Mumbo Jumbo made money float into his hat, hasn't he done this strip before? Brave noted while mentally thinking that Mumbo needed to get some new material. Oh wow. Good one. A bubbly version of her voice set with a laugh, and Brave blinked for a moment while looking around, wondering why she was hearing her sister's voice. Weird. She mumbled before shrugging her shoulders as she confidently marched into the bank, smirking despite herself. Hey blue boar. Brave shouted at the villain, and the blue magician turned to her and grinned. Ah so it's the little birdie girl, where are the other titans? Or did you come to see a real magician at work? Mumbo questioned with a grin and Brave cocked her head to one side, and gave the blue man a look. First of all, I don't need the others to take you down. Second, if you don't give up in the next three seconds, I'll be forced to resort to more violent measures. Brave replied with a smirk, and Mumbo raised a brow before grinning. So the little raven is flying solo today. Well you're too late to stop me. Mumbo Jumbo. The blue magician called out while waving his magic wand towards Brave, a boxing glove popping out of the ground and heading for her. Grinning, Brave jumped into the air, and placed a hand onto the glove, before flipping off of it in an amazing display of acrobatic ability, before landing in a crouch. Ha! This'll be even easier than I thought. Brave said to herself while standing back up and brushing off her arms. Seeing this, Mumbo looked at the girl in shock, wondering when she got so athletic, then took the time to notice her change in colored cloak and claws, and thus blinked. There's something different about you. He noted and Raven grinned before crouching back and lunging forward kicking, Mumbo in the nose and knocking him away. The mad magician threw his hands into the air when the kick connected, sending his wand flying as he skidded along the ground comically before slamming into a wall face first. Catching his wand with one hand Brave gave him a very amused look before snapping it like a toothpick. Beeping as he returned to the form of a normal man, Mumbo looked at Raven in shock, while all his spells were instantly cancelled. But you I mean how did where did what? Mumbo mumbled to himself in shock, and Brave cocked her hip to the side with a smirk across her lips. Wow, looks like all you're missing is why, and when. She said mockingly, before cracking her knuckles as she made her way over to the villain. Hey now. You've already snapped my wand no need to get violent anymore. Mumbo insisted and Brave merely grinned while grabbing his shirt and lifted him off the ground with one arm. Gulping audibly, Mumbo looked at the green cloaked girl with a small amount of fear, before both she and her cloak were lifted her up by Cyborg. Sorry to do this Ray, but you seriously need to chill. Cyborg stated before wrapping his arms around Brave to hold her down. However, he then briefly saw both her eyes and her cloak turn blood red only for Brave to shake her head and look panicked. Let go of me. Brave shouted loudly, while struggling in Cyborg's grip. Damn it. You have three seconds to let me go. Brave growled out before twitching as she huffed. One, two, three. Brave exclaimed before elbowing Cyborg in the side, causing him to grimace while backing up slowly, then looked at her with white eyes. When the hell did you get so strong? Cyborg demanded and Brave grit her teeth while continuing to struggle in his grasp. Come on now I said chill already, we're not going to hurt you, we only want to. Cyborg tried to say before Brave slammed the back of her head into his nose causing him to lurch back, her sheer strength surprising him as she pried his arms away from her body. No you don't understand. You shouldn't touch me. She'll get mad if you touch me. Brave started saying before bringing her legs up and then kicked into Cyborg's stomach, knocking him away with the same surprising strength before flipping in the air and landing in a crouch. Cyborg. Knight said in shock, while he and Starfire moved to help their friend up, Brave looking around worriedly. Friend Cyborg, are you on damage? Starfire asked worriedly, while Cyborg grunted and placed a hand over his stomach. Now why does she have to hate on me like that? He muttered to himself with a frown while Brave slowly backed away. Cyborg, I, I'm sorry I was just, you shouldn't have. Brave started to say before quickly bolting, leaving the titans in the bank with Mumbo, while she ran away. Beast boy, wait here for the police to take Mumbo into jail. Donna, Bard you two should follow, and keep an eye on Raven. Cyborg do you think you? Knight ordered before turning to Cyborg, while Donna and Kid Flash went after the girl, Cyborg giving Nightwing a look as his response. Find Ray, I'm heading back to the tower to check on that green shit that got on her. If I find out anything I'll be sure to call you. Cyborg stated, and Nightwing nodded his head before looking to Star. Come on, let's go find Raven before she hurts someone. Knight stated, and both teens nodded before following him as they exited the bank and went after Raven. Dude, why am I always left watching the bad guy? Beast Boy wondered and Cyborg rolled his eyes, before patting the teen on his shoulder. Take it this way Beast Boy, Rob trusts you with making sure Mumbo, and the other villains don't get away again. Cyborg offered the younger teen and Beast Boy blinked, before grinning up at the titanium teen. Dude, do you really think so? He asked and Cyborg nodded his head, before patting Beast Boy on the shoulder. 
While no one said it, Beast Boy was dependable. He didn't have the raw strength of him or Star, the sheer power of Raven, or even the brilliance and tactical genius of Robin. But Beast Boy never let his friends down. I know so Beast Boy. Cyborg offered before frowning as he made his way out of the bank and walking over to the tea car and got in. Don't worry Ray, whatever's going on, we've all got your back. Cyborg thought to himself while he put the pedal to the metal and went well over the speed limit. Naruto groaned lightly, then grimaced when he felt something hit his face. A dripping sound then caught the blonde in's attention before he looked all around and felt his eyes whiting. He was now laying in the corridors of his mindscape, only something weird had happened, reddish black tendrils were covering all the walls, and even the bars to Kyuubi's cage. Hello Gaki I'd like you to meet a new tenant of yours. He just moved in recently, but he's just dying to meet you. Kyuubi said with a chuckle, Naruto looking at him strangely, only to yelp as a tendril of the red stuff suddenly shot from the walls and wrapped around his legs. Looking down towards it, Naruto cried out upon seeing a beast of some kind with a pumpkin grin, and white bones shaped like a skull for a mask, its flesh reptilian in nature and black as onyx with tufts of reddish fur scattered over its visible body, its lung almost rapid like ears reaching off the back of its head, while its dangerous orange eyes with plus shaped pupils loomed in the darkness of its mask. Gritting his teeth, Naruto twisted around and started clawing at the ground, trying desperately to pull himself away from the monster behind him. Giving out a low, screeching roar, the beast reached out with a pair of massive claws that easily wrapped around Naruto's entire lower legs. Crying out, Naruto grabbed the edge of the entrance to the Kyuubi cell. Looking at it he saw it grin darkly as he started to loose his grip, the beast behind him narrowing its eyes, while four furry tails came out of the darkness and wrapped around his arms and neck. Pulling him into the darkness with a scream while the Kyuubi started to laugh while pumping its chakra towards the beast in the shadows with an evil grin. In the real world, Naruto's eyes suddenly opened, however they were no longer blue. Now they were a dark orange color with a horizontal slit like a toad being pierced by a thin vertical slit, red markings at the sides of his eyes. Growling low in his throat, the blonde opened his mouth to reveal fang teeth, while claws grew from his fingers, and a screeching roar tore its way from his throat, as the rest of his body suddenly began to change as well. With the titans. Brave ran down an alley, before sliding to a halt when she felt that she'd finally ditched the others. Shit, shit, shit. What's going on I just felt rage. I don't do rage, so was she getting out, or what? Brave wondered to herself, before grimacing and leaning into a nearby wall, a hand on her head. Hearing someone behind her, Brave looked at Kid Flash and Donna with a slight frown. Get away I'm not safe. Brave mumbled before groaning once more as she felt a migraine start to come on. Nala Craven, I know we don't know you that well, but you can't just expect us to leave you when something's wrong. Kid Flash stated with Donna nodding at his sight, and Brave made a mental note to get Raven to be nicer to him and Donna in the future. Shaking her head however, as she realized these two probably wouldn't listen to reason, Brave decided to take a more direct approach to the matter, and given she was the best fighter, and second strongest emotion in Raven, it was clear to her what that was. Fine then if that's the way you bozos want it, hiya. Brave said before jumping into a flying kick to Kid Flash's face. Ducking down into a roll as Donna tried to grab her, Brave then twisted into a sweeping kick to knock her to her back. Hearing something, probably Bola, heading her way, Brave then flipped over the weapon, and turned to see Star and Knight had caught up. Friend Raven, please stop this senseless fighting, we only wish to help. Starfire insisted and Brave groaned as her cloak, and eyes flashed red once more. No you guys can't be around me I'm not safe right now. Brave said mostly to herself before flipping back and making a break for it. Starfire, get her. Knight ordered and Starfire reluctantly flew towards Brave. Seeing the Tamaranian girl, Brave mentally groaned, before turning and running clear up a wall, flipped off of it, and dropped her knee into Starfire's back, remind me to have her teach me that move. Knight said to Donna as she got up, and the Amazon nodded her head with white eyes. Meanwhile Kid Flash got back up and then rushed towards Brave, seeing him coming, Brave couldn't help it as she held her cape to the side. Toro, Toro. She called and Kid Flash slid to a halt and placed his hands on his hips, while giving her a look. You didn't honestly think that it worked did you? Kid Flash questioned and Brave looked thoughtful for a moment before moving her cape to show her fist, and then socked him in the jaw. No, not really. She admitted while clapping off her fists, and Kid Flash held his now throbbing jaw, while Knight looked to Donna. I had my turn. Donna commented while holding her hands up and Knight grimaced, before then rushing past Kid Flash and jumped into a flying kick. Seeing this, a grin spread over Brave's face as she evaded the attack, and then lashed out with a quick punch. Dodging to the side, Nightwing grabbed her arm and tossed her to the side. Finally a real fight. Brave commented while pushing herself up and flipping into a double kick, Knight blocking them before kneeing her in the gut and wincing. I'll just apologize to Raven when she's back to normal, and I'm also going to see about having this emotion let out more, she's pretty tough. Knight thought to himself while evading several punches from Brave, and then grabbed her arm and spun her around before leaning her into the wall. Nearby, Starfire helped Kid flash back to his feet as they watched the fight between Raven and their leader finally end.
Listen Raven, we're your friends, we're here to help, so stop fighting already, so we can help you. Nightwing insisted and Brave groaned as she flashed red once more, her body posture dropping, as if she was becoming exhausted. Damn it I know and that's why I'm trying to get away. Brave shouted before using her legs to push back, then flip over Nightwing and kick him in the back, shoving him into the wall. Bracing himself against it, before he would have hit, Knight then turned as Brave swayed and placed a hand on her head. Ugh, something's really wrong with me, I should. She started to say, before feeling her eyes roll up into her head as she fell to her knees. Raven. Knight called out to the girl, only for her to shoot up, and her cloak to change colors. Wow. He started to question before the girl turned, making him blink, she still looked like Brave had, having the armor, though minus the pink cloak, however now she was actually smiling. Hi guys. She offered with a grin, and then seemed fascinated by the light leather armor she was wearing. Oh wow, Brave's armor. Cool she never lets me wear it or play with her stuff. She said happily to herself, and then frowned as she looked at her hands for a moment. Hmm, too plain. She said mostly to herself, before snapping her fingers, a pair of jeweled brooches attaching themselves to the backs of her hands like on her old gloves. Much better. She said happily, while flexing her fingers, the smile not once leaving her lips. Friend Raven is it you? Starfire asked the newcomer, and the violet-eyed girl gave her a look. Of course it is who else do you know that looks like this? She quipped and Starfire blinked for a moment, while Nightwing raised a brow. But why are you wearing pink? He questioned with a gaping jaw and Raven took a mock thoughtful look for a moment. Cause it's my favorite color. She offered and the other titans looked at her strangely. What, do I have something on my face or something? Raven asked while looking at them with a confused stare and Kid Flash shook his head. Am I okay now Raven, you're acting kind of funny, but then again at least you're not attacking us anymore. Kid Flash questioned then mumbled to himself, and the girl grinned, as she couldn't resist making a joke. Yeah well you look kind of funny in yellow tights, so I guess we're even. She said before laughing to herself, and walked off while holding her ribs as she continued to laugh to herself. Deeping for a moment, Kid Flash looked to Nightwing and Starfire, both of whom looked just as, if not more, confused than he was. I don't know and I don't want to know. Nightwing mumbled mostly to himself before running after the now pink cloaked girl. Racing out of the alley, they spotted Raven now happily smelling flowers and sighing in content. The last one was bravery this one must be joy. Nightwing suddenly realized and Kid Flash inwardly named the new Raven joy. Oh my, so this is the most pleasant and positive aspects of friend Raven. Starfire questioned and the others mutely nodded their heads, while watching Joe now happily skip away without a care in the world. Please, if friend Raven has so much positive energy, why does she not ever show it? Starfire wondered and Nightwing gave her a look making her make an O with her mouth as she remembered Raven's powers. Come on, we better catch up with happy Raven before she accidentally blows something up. Knight stated, instantly getting agreements from the others as they ran after Joy. Turning a corner they saw Joy looking into a pet store with her hands clasped together. Ah, the puppies are so cute. Joy said to herself and Starfire blinked for a moment, before looking to Nightwing. Friend Robin, may we please keep the positive Raven? She is most agreeable yes. Starfire asked her friend and Nightwing gave her an incredulous look, while Beast Boy flew down towards Joy. Happy? Oh man wow, you got out too. Beast Boy questioned, while changing back to normal, and the overly cheerful girl turned to him and grinned. Ha, oh hey Beast Boy, long time no see. She offered and Beast Boy nodded his head before frowning. Say, what happened to Miss Commando Green? I thought she was the one who got loose. Beast Boy questioned and Joy laughed to herself at the slight joke about her sister Emotion Brave. Really? Don't know where she went Beast Boy. I just suddenly found myself here, kind of nice really, and the puppies are just so cute. Joy said while turning back to look at the puppies and Beast Boy nodded his head, before walking over to Knight and the others. Hey guys, what happened? Beast Boy questioned in Nightwing's side, while rubbing his temples, it looked like it was going to be one of those days. Well, we caught up with Brave, but she kept insisting she wasn't safe, or something before she was replaced by Joy over there. Nightwing explained and Beast Boy nodded his head for a moment. Joy hot, me and Cyborg always just called her happy not Joy. Beast Boy noted and Joy placed an arm over his shoulders with a smirk. Well Joy is an actual name so I like it better. She noted and Beast Boy yelled while looking at her in surprise. Dude. Where'd you come from? He demanded and Joy smirked. Blame my parents. She offered and Beast Boy blinked, before laughing to himself. Dude, good one. He told the pink cloaked girl with a smile and Starfire looked to Nightwing once more. Even friend Beast Boy gets along with the positive Raven, may we please keep her for a little while longer friend Nightwing, I wish to see if she'd like to visit the mall of shopping, now that she is without restraint. Starfire pleaded and Joy blinked before a grin spread over her face. The mall? Sounds cool. She said and Starfire looked to Nightwing pleadingly, while Beast Boy frowned. Hey. Whoa, slow down now Star. I know Raven can be grumpy, mean, sarcastic, and moody. But she's still our friend, and we have to get her back to normal. 
Beast Boy stated and Starfire looked sheepish for a moment while rubbing the back of her neck. Yes, I know, but it is just that she is normally unable to be partaking in any of the fun, yet this one seems like she enjoys it quite well. I was only wondering if perhaps we could keep her around for a little while longer, so that we may allow her to express herself as the brave one did, it may even help friend Raven in some way. Starfire explained and Beast Boy gave her a look, Nightwing marrying it, and she grinned sheepishly. And I must admit, thoughts of being able to spend the girl time with friend Raven were most pleasant. She offered nervously, and Kid Flash cleared his throat. Not that this discussion isn't really fascinating guys, but you might want to know, she's gone. Kid Flash commented then said, while the others looked around for joy and then groaned. Great, now where did she go? Donna wondered and Nightwing thought for a moment before smirking. The mole. She said it'd be cool right? And this raven is all about having fun. Knight reminded and Starfire grinned before flying off towards the mole, the others following after the alien princess as she left. Ravager's HQ. Sakura was not having a good day. First of all, her left eye had turned the same dark forest green as Ayane's. She'd lost control of her right foot for a while, though Ayane had stopped tripping her a while ago. However, the mere fact this was happening was more than just a little troubling to her. At the moment the girl was sitting back, leaning into a wall away from everyone else as she tried to figure out what was going on. Looking into a miniature mirror she had with her she then saw a streak of fuchsia hair falling down at the side of her head. Oh come on. What is going on here? She demanded while her form in the mirror then turned into a very amused Ayane's. Like I said, I don't know, but I like it. Sakura spoke aloud with Ayane's voice in both her, and Ayane stared at one another for a moment. Wait, I can talk through you now. Shanro. Finally. I will be heard. She said with a grin, and Sakura nearly wept as she leaned her head back into the wall behind her. Why kami sama, why me? I've never done anything bad enough to deserve this have I. Sakura wondered of the heavens, and Ayane decided to give her two cents once more, clearly enjoying her newfound freedom. Maybe it's because you cheated on Naruto for Sasuke. She offered casually with an amused smirk and Sakura growled in her throat. Shut up. She shouted at Ayane, then heard the other girl snicker in her mind, and palmed her face. Elsewhere, Ravager was sitting in her usual seat, dressed in her normal uniform and frowning towards her screen. She was currently analyzing the green news that had been on Sasuke's clothes and frowned to herself. Looking over the strange substance she frowned as she realized just what it was. A mutagen, but what kind? She wondered to herself before doing a search for anything on the strange substance she could find. Nothing. She mumbled and frowned to herself. That meant one of two things, either the stuff was very illegal, or someone didn't want anyone knowing they had made it. Hitting a few keys, Ravager gave an order to several of her commandos to search the warehouse from earlier, and try to find some clue to what was going on. As she did this she also continued looking over the green mutagen, wondering what kind of effect it was going to have on those exposed to it. I could probably check on Sasuke, something should have happened by now, but Sakura was also exposed to it, by him of course Ravager noted, and then shook her head, checking those two wouldn't be prudent, given that the ninja liked to be secretive. Raven however was much easier to spy on, plus it gave her the added bonus of not having to talk to the shinobi, since they really annoyed her. Elsewhere Sasuke threw up into the toilet of the bathroom, and groaned as his finger and toenails lengthened. What's going on with me? Sasuke wondered while pushing himself to his feet, and walked over to the sink. Looking at his face he shook his head, while seeing a familiar blue mark on the bridge of his nose, shaped like a three-pointed star, and his showering in eyes were active, only the sclera around them had turned black. This can't be, my cursed seal, but it was sealed away with Orchimaru. He whispered before looking back to his newfound claws, and a grin slowly spread across his lips. Or maybe, this is just something else. He whispered while clenching a fist with a grin, Jump City. Nightwing and the others ran into the mall looking for joy, only for Beast Boy to blink when he saw Raven, now wearing orange, and blowing her nose on her cloak. Picking her ear afterwards, the girl looked around lazily, before making her way towards the food court. Dude, she changed color again. Beast Boy said, stating the obvious, and Knight palmed his face before sighing heavily. Let's just go get her. The teen grumbled while making his way over to the food court, where the orange cloaked Raven was now eating a hamburger. For some reason, this one is acting like her normal self. Knight noted then watched as she wiped her mouth off on her sleeve, and let out a belch. Mostly. He then added as an afterthought, while Beast Boy snickered to himself. Sighing, Starfire then flew over to the new raven, and picked her up, causing her to twitch. Put, me, down. She ordered in a familiar low monotone. Friend raven. Starfire then asked, while throwing the girl up, and caught her by her biceps. Is that really you? She asked and the orange cloaked girl merely corked up an eyebrow with a frown. No, I'm an evil Depelgenger here to discredit Raven as a hero. She replied sarcastically and Starfire blinked, the orange cloaked girl sighing. Yes, I'm Raven. She then stated and Starfire squealed happily before hugging the orange cloaked girl tightly, making her grimace. Oh my friend I am so mirthful to see you undamaged. 
Starfire exclaimed before releasing the hug, still holding the now obviously annoyed girl up. We have been finding many of your other personalities so much today, we were beginning to worry that you were lost to us forever. Starfire said and Raven twitched, and then held up a finger and Starfire looked up. Smoking, Raven then hacked up a Luigi, and spit it in the air, the said Luigi hitting Starfire in the face. Yelping and releasing the girl, Raven fell down, and stopped herself above the ground, before placing her feet onto the floor. Yawning, she then walked off, Nightwing moving to stand in front of her, and block her path. Care to move out of the way buddy? I'd really rather not be here right now. She asked then stated with a frown and Nightwing frowned, she sounded like Raven, but she didn't act like Raven well, not completely like Raven at least. You're not Raven. He stated and the girl sighed before rolling her eyes. Actually, I technically am. A part of her at least. She said with a shrug, and then belched once more, before scratching her shoulder. Frowning at the orange cloaked girl, Starfire hovered beside of Nightwing with a frown. What you did was most rude. She stated while pointing a finger at the girl, and the orange cloaked girl shook her head. Not my problem. She stated and walked to the side, then sighed seeing Beast Boy in front of her. Out of the way grass stain. She ordered and Beast Boy shook his head, looking around for some way to get him out of the way, she then placed her finger into her mouth, getting it wet, and then grabbed Kid Flash by his collar, before sticking it into his ear. The boy made a face and shivered as she did, Beast Boy snorting before placing his hands over his mouth. Snickering for a moment as Kid Flash's look, Beast Boy then burst into laughter, and Raven walked past him while the others gaped at the girl. Dude, good one. Beast Boy called out and Kid Flash twitched before shivering. Talk about Miss Root with attitude. He commented and Raven turned with her arms crossed over her chest. Hey, who you calling rude, chicken head? She demanded and then turned on her heel, not waiting for an answer, and made her way to the door. Excuse me Rich, but why hasn't she been using her powers? Donna suddenly asked and Nightwing frowned, while noticing the exact same thing. I mean, she'll fly, she'll teleport, but only in moderation, it's almost like she just wants to walk around Jump City. Donna then said while well, Starfire took a thoughtful look before an idea popped into her head. Perhaps friend Raven's emotions are unable to use her powers, she does have to cut them off from herself for much of the time. Starfire reminded and Beast Boy slowly got up with a grin, obviously amused. Dude, who knows, and more importantly, who cares. Just so long as that really nasty Red Raven doesn't get out the others shouldn't be so hard to deal with. Beast Boy insisted and Nightwing frowned, while giving the youth a look. You shouldn't have said that. He told the younger boy before making his way out of the mall to follow the orange raven, while also hoping she hadn't gone too far. Tartarus HQ. Jinx paced the floor of Tartarus HQ, a worried look across her face, while the others did their usual things. Most of them were in other parts of the building, Jinx being the only one who was even in ops at the moment. Frowning, Jinx wondered for what felt like the millionth time where Tempest and Donnie were. Out of the door, Donnie suddenly walked with a yawn before yelping as Jinx pounced on her. Donnie, thank god, do you have any idea how worried I was about you? Jinx demanded and Donnie managed a sheepish grin, while Jinx looked around then narrowed her eyes. Where's Temp? Jinx then demanded and Donnie sighed, while wishing she got more sleep. He's a titan's tower he got pretty banged up by those ninja that are chasing him. Donnie replied with a light groan and then rubbed her temples. Now can you get off me, I've got bruises in places I shouldn't have bruises thanks to all those robots from last night. Donnie grumbled while Jinx growled, and then grabbed Donnie's shirt by her the collar. Why didn't you tell us that sooner? She demanded of the young teen, and Donnie gave the older girl a look. What part of bruises in places I shouldn't have bruises don't you comprehend? Plus, I was tired and needed a good night's sleep. Donnie admitted before yawning into one of her hands, and Jinx twitched. Damn it Donnie. This is serious. Jinx shouted while standing up and picked up the girl with her, then put her on a stool and walked over to an intercom. Slamming her hand into it with a deep frown on her face, Jinx took a few calming breaths before speaking. Alright listen up. Alright Tartarus listen up, I want everyone to form in at ops. We've got a batch of shinobi we need to hunt down. Jinx stated with a deep frown across her face, and then took her hand from the intercom as she leaned into the wall, waiting for the others. Trigon laughed to himself as he looked down upon the happenings of the world. The ancient demon then turned his eyes as Kyuubi's own eyes opened up nearby soon after his chuckle. So Kyuubi, how does it feel to watch as your host's own inner demons devour him? Trigon questioned and Kyuubi chuckled to himself, before looking to where Trigon had been watching Raven. Not half as amusing as watching your daughter be taken apart piece by piece by her own. Kyuubi replied while watching his rage, a red cloaked raven, absorbed the orange cloaked raven inside of their shared mindscape, while a grey cloaked one took control of raven's body, yes. My daughter's mental state does make her own transformation most amusing to watch. Trigon agreed while looking on in obvious amusement at the happenings of the mortal world. Such foolish creatures, they have no idea, what it is they are soon to face. My daughter's demonic heritage, and the Uzumaki boy's own suppressed inner demons. Trigon noted and Kyuubi grinned, while nodding his head in agreement with Trigon. 
and even if they do realize what is happening, it will already be too late. Kyubi noted and Trigon nodded his head, watching on with great amusement, as he knew that no one besides he and Kyubi truly knew what was happening to the two. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.